If you've ever wondered where all of Earth's minerals came from, then you might be interested in the theory of mineral evolution. It's a hypothesis that attempts to answer the question, how did we get from a void of nothing but swirling gases to a planet with over 5,000 minerals on it? Today, we're gonna give you a quick rundown of the universe's mineralogical timeline, and it all starts with the Big Bang Theory. The theory suggests that a Big Bang created gases like hydrogen and helium, and even trace amounts of lithium, but nothing to make minerals out of quite yet. These elements eventually combined to form young stars. The star's natural processes created not crystals, but synthesized heavier elements like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and silicon. If you know your gemology, then you know that those elements are essential parts of loads of minerals, but one stands out in particular, carbon. Because of the early abundance of carbon, it's very likely that the first mineral the universe ever created was diamond. As if diamond needed more accolades, right? Graphite, also pure carbon, likely came after. Oxides like rutile, corundum, and spinel also formed, as well as carbides like moissanite and some silicates. All told, there were a dozen new minerals just floating around, little shards in space, waiting for something to happen, like cosmic dust bunnies. Then the sun ignited, melting any of these molecular clouds that got too close. This led to the formation of new solid bodies, primitive and common meteorites called chondrites. Now we have about 60 minerals and the starting point for the mineralogical makeup of our entire solar system. Aqueous and thermal changes in these chondrites put about 250 new minerals on the board. We can observe the mineral makeup of chondrite meteorites that have fallen to Earth, and they're made up of minerals like quartz, aka beach sand, clay minerals, and carbonates, like what our limestone ridges and reefs are made of. So by this time, the chondrites were lumping together into larger planetesimals, and our solar system began to settle into place around the sun, with the Earth slotting into third position now begins Earth's own unique mineralogical evolution, which can be broken up somewhat arbitrarily into three phases, planetary accretion, the reworking of the crust, and biological influences. Let's start about 4.5 billion years ago with phase one. I already started to describe this part. It includes the melting of those molecular dust bunnies and the condensing of chondrites into larger bodies. The nebular soup began to produce iron nickel alloys, sulfides like pyrite, galena, and cinnabar, and other silicates and oxides. In those 60 new minerals, we already see all six crystal systems represented, and we don't even have planets yet. Speaking of planets, let's revisit those growing chondrites. They formed a new mineral that shook up the whole mineral game, ice. The introduction of ice aided in the formation of gypsum and calcite, and ultimately, after a couple hundred million years of planetary accretion, the solar system is up to 250 minerals. On to phase two, which begins with a violent impact that ends up creating the moon. Actually, this was generally a pretty violent time for the Earth, but it was just going through a phase. Anyways, that huge impact pretty much melted and scrambled Earth's crust and mantle, leaving things in quite a state of flux. Because of this, it's hard to know exactly what happened all those years ago, but thankfully, we have the mighty Zircon, whose inclusions of quartz, muscovite, and hornblende give us an idea of the ingredients that were bubbling around in the Earth soup. There was also a melting and remelting of rock that created rocks like basalt, on bodies like Mercury and the Moon, this process would have yielded about 350 minerals. But Earth was rich in volatiles, things like an atmosphere with N2 and CO2 in it, and increasingly salty oceans. These factors, paired with volcanic activity and plate tectonics, meant the evolution of igneous rocks and an Earth with about 1,500 minerals. And we ain't seen nothing yet. Phase three marks the dramatic influence of biology on the mineralogy of our planet. Oxygen levels began to increase a little bit and organisms began to develop biomineralization. They had skeletons. About 2.45 billion years ago began an event called the Great Oxygenation Event, which marks a dramatic spike in oxygen levels in Earth's atmosphere. This meant that minerals that already oxidized at low levels began to hit multiple oxidation states, things like silver, bismuth, mercury, and of course, copper. Ultimately, this period produced 2,500 new minerals. Then came the Boring Billion, a period of about a billion years where nothing really significant happened. But then, the Cambrian Explosion. 
Life suddenly began to thrive. New species of animals were developing, and that whole biomineralization thing I talked about earlier was widespread. Skeletons everywhere. This was when aragonite, apatite, and opal began to form. Ultimately, about two-thirds of all minerals on Earth owe their existence to life itself. How cool is that? 64 mineral phases have been identified as occurring in organisms, and over two dozen of which are found in humans. Huh, does that mean I'm a mineral specimen? Well, probably not a very valuable one. So there you have it, a rough theory of how 12 minerals floating through the void of space led to the over 5,000 known minerals we have today. And that number is still growing. How many more minerals could there be to discover? I don't know, but we'll let you know when they pop up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.